Hi, this is Kurt Barone, and welcome to another edition of File Law Roundup. All right, next one. Uh, hey, this one's right up your alley. We got an overtime <laughs> case. All right. Yeah. You've yeah, been no. following this case, right? The uh, yeah. Encinitas. Yeah, it was, it was one of several um, white collar overtime exemptions. And basically what that is, is that's that complete overtime exemption that like typically a fire chief, maybe an assistant fire chief that works Monday through Friday squarely falls in. And it's an exemption from from any overtime pay. Um, and obviously where the line gets drawn or where you start to see these battles or, you know, legal issues is, is when you start applying that to folks that work on a shift and are in the, the term we use is first responders that are a potential first responder. Uh, so here, this is a uh, lawsuit was filed by four battalion chiefs. Two of them were former battalion chiefs. Um, two were current, still still with the, uh, the city of Encinitas, Cal California. They basically were treated as exempt employees, and the four of them and thought that that was wrong, so they they opted to, uh, to file the lawsuit. So in the end, it wasn't it wasn't a trial. They ended up settling it, um, as is very typical in these types of of cases, these types of situations. They settle it for it's one hundred and forty five thousand in damages, which, um, as far as the settlement is concerned, it looks as if that's right around what they would have been owed if they were treated as overtime eligible. So it was no no. Um, no liquidated damages, you know, because that was kind of the claims where they were going to get around 140, 150,000 in, in back wages. And then typically under an FLSA action, there's that equal amount of damages that are applied. So it would have cost the city, in theory, if they lost at least 300,000 or right around that area before you begin paying attorneys and all sorts of stuff like that. So here they agreed to the settlement, um, 145,000 plus another 25,000 for the attorneys that represented the, uh, the battalion chiefs. And it looks as if, and it's not clear 100% uh, from, from reading the uh, the settlement, but it looks as if they're going to be treating them as non-exempt moving forward because there was an additional, the very end of the, of the settlement documents, there was an additional line that the two remaining battalion chiefs were going to get some retroactive pay back to January of this year. So my thought process is that was that retroactive pay was one half of their regular rate for all scheduled hours worked between the signing of this agreement in last January, or I'm sorry, from, I believe it was up until last January. So the end of last year into January. So what that led me to believe is it's not, it's not in the documents, but I think that they kind of made the, those folks non-exempt moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. So, that was my guess. And I, I actually was looking around for any clarity on that. No, but I, I, didn't I couldn't see find anything. it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and that, that always remains a question because if the community settles the case, but then they don't change going forward, they're opening mm -hmm. themselves up to the same suit in a couple of years yeah. or maybe even sooner. And it's truly a lot. And, and a lot of times, one of the things that they, the court examines in any FLSA settlement is whether there's a true dispute here, you know, whether there's a real, is this, is this a slam dunk? Are the employees correct here? Is the employer correct here? Is this a slam dunk? This is one of those where, the settlements here are, are are common and quite honestly should occur because it's it is truly based upon the facts and it's truly um it, it could go either way yeah yeah i um i quoted extensively from the judge's decision so that folks could see how the judge is going to be looking at it and you'll notice there if you're not really tune into what the judge is doing the, the judge here is trying to show that there is a controversy He's not trying to rule one way or the other. He's just trying to point out that there is a controversy. And so what, you know, typically when we see a decision, the judge is saying, this is why I'm ruling in a certain way. Here, the judge is just pointing out both sides of the argument and saying, yeah, there's a fair dispute here. Therefore, I have jurisdiction. I think both sides are reasonable. Therefore, the settlement is reasonable. 